Untouched by Fire is the sophomore full-length album from Art. This is a melodic doom metal band from Mark Deeks of Winterfeleth, and he is the keyboardist in that band. He's the main performer and arranger in this group, and again, their focus is on a melodic form of doom metal, which is, is uh, slightly informed by melodic death doom. I would say there's a gothic doom metal touch to it, maybe a general British doom metal influence to all of it, but the defining trait of his work is much more centered around the chorale style vocals, which are vaguely descript uh, described as something like Gregorian chants in their arrangement. Uh, it is a melody driven proxy for the lyrics, and it is a, a major component of the way that they present their sound. It, it gives it that uh, cathedral-esque style. It is It gives it a, a monastic feeling, and that is appropriate for the time period in which it is the theme of the album is set which is uh during the the early history of anglo-saxon territories in northern england as uh I won't get too much in the themes because I don't know the history all that well. I've learned quite a bit from the record and reading about it, but my interest was more so the uh, the melodic development and the production values that have changed the sound of the band over the course of two records. Their debut album, Take Up My Bones, back in 2022, was one of my favorite records of that year. I rated it very highly. It was something that is not only original and unique in its undertaking, it is particularly sophisticated, and uh, I like the traditional doom metal tones they worked in to that record it made it feel varietal and some of the pacing uh, kind of kept up in an interesting way this record it is has a different production value applied to it is much more professional in its render and its realization and the result is a uh, a record that is decidedly different in tone per its themes but also different in its undertaking as far as conveying something which is uh, much more it's bigger in its space it it feels like it is set within almost a, a a cathedral-esque setting once again but it is a bigger one and it feels like there's a real choir behind the whole thing it feels like there's uh, a, just a much more expensive undertaking for lack of a better description and so the mournful reverence and the depth of feeling applied to each piece almost outgrows the theme quickly it feels like it's um these are hymns this is a song book and each song feels related to the next so before i get too carried away we'll cut into a clip and just get a sense for how the record sounds overall and this 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 hymnal we're sitting there in church kind of feeling So naturally, when you have the fellow behind Empyrium producing an album that is basically built upon uh, choir arrangements and uh, a big doom metal sound, uh, this is going to be a big and dramatic album. And I think that that took me a while to sort of come to grips with because I felt like this was much more of a an organic, ancient feeling doom metal band. And, and they've extended this into a much more, I wouldn't say modern, but uh, a much more stately and better realized product and i think one that is easier to listen to now it's but it's a little bit more samey in the fact that once they've established that sound on that first song it really doesn't change up throughout the full listen like i said this feels like a song book it feels like we were, were going through the book of hymns and it's all by the same choir and band and i think that's entirely appropriate for their goal and their storytelling and where the story would be told uh, because it is so tied in with the church uh, but if you're just looking for a doom metal experience and something that is a, l a little bit ruddy around the corners it's a little bit darker than that uh, it doesn't allow a lot of room for variation here in terms of just different timbers and textures along the way so really the focus is upon these hymnal melodies and when, when they when you're forced to focus so much on the arrangements and the mo inherent melodicism of each one we start to see points of repetition which uh, they generate a successful vernacular in terms of you know a hymn and a set of hymns but uh, for for like a doom metal record it's kind of like well we're going from uh, chapter to chapter of this one continuous story so it feels like one big song but uh, uh with a lot of movements that are fairly similar in the way that they they develop their cadence so 
that generates a lot of personality. It generates a singular experience once again, but it is a little bit different than the first record. And that was off putting at first, but I think that the, uh, the dramatism that this brings and the element of focus that it brings to this record is even more appreciable. It is, uh, you know, something different that is also along those same lines and uh, effective in the same way. So I really appreciated that. It, again, it's it's unlike anything else I've heard before or since. And I think that uh, that will appeal to a lot of people who are looking for something maybe not even related to doom metal. You'll, you'll certainly get the bones of doom metal throughout this experience and you'll feel that, but you're not getting the, tr the full on tradition of it. You're getting Ard's own voice and it's a very strong one. So for me, the strongest points were the audiovisual design, the, the look and the feeling and the, the uh, actual sound of this record, as well as the immersion available as a result. So otherwise everything here is up to a, a very high standard it is a high recommendation verging on a very high recommendation for me and uh, if you're a fan of doom metal and you want something completely different this this is certainly it uh, check it out yourself it released on april 26th and uh, go ahead and read my review for a more complete array of thoughts on uh, the album uh -huh. 